All right, so welcome to my page. Hello, my name is Leslie. I teach at Breathe Together Yoga, and this is a part of their um, live schedule. So this morning we had Larry, and then later today we'll have Paulette, and I should look at the whole schedule, but there's always amazing people. If you need to do more yoga in the evening, go ahead and do that too. We're here for you. So if you are participating in the Instagram challenge, I am Earth Yoga Love on Instagram. Um, we're doing a month long, eight limbs of yoga themed Instagram challenge. And so yesterday we worked on the first Niyama, Satcha. Today we are doing Santosha, <laughs> which means in Sanskrit, um, contentment. Yes, contentment. So um, I feel like I'm too far from the camera right now. I'll go back to my mat in a second. I want to be a little closer to you guys because I don't get to see you in real life. Oh, my mouse is not working. Okay. So contentment today. Finding contentment. What does that mean for you? Yeah. Being okay with what is. And the thing is, Right now, we sort of don't know what is day to day, hour by hour. Everything changes so quickly. And me and my family, we decided to self-isolate um, or shelter in place last Friday. So we're now on day eight. That was my daughter's first day of no school. And I will tell you, if you're, st if you're still new, if you're not in California and maybe you're just now having your kids not go to school, um, at first it's a little rough. <laughs> Finding that contentment of being at home with your significant other or your children. And if you are alone, reach out to some friends. We are here for you. You can call me later if you're one of my friends who has has no family or um, to live with, you know, because I can't imagine how difficult that would be. And we all have our own difficulties, right? <laughs> Homeschooling my children. My husband has to take his work calls and I'm doing this. So how do we find our, our new normal, our new contentment? So it's a perfect word for today, contentment, and just sitting with that. So we're gonna sit with that today and just see what it means for us right now. And contentment might not even be possible today, it might not be possible tomorrow. But what we're playing with is the idea that we, we can eventually find contentment with the way things are now. And if your yoga practice is really strong, then you are able to find contentment in every single situation. So this right here is child's play. <laughs> I am not that strong of a yogi. This is really hard. This is really hard work. Um, but the practice has helped me. It's helped me enter into everything with cautiousness and curiosity and less fear and anxiety. It doesn't mean I don't feel it. I still feel it in my gut some, but not as bad as I think it would have been had I not had yoga in my life. So let's begin by coming down to our mats and laying on our backs. And if you have a blanket or sweater or socks on, because your house is freezing, feel free to keep those layers on as long as you need. If you are practicing in socks, it will make it a little more challenging once we go to movements like downward dog or things where we wanted to keep our legs strong. But you know, that means you're just building more muscles than the rest of us. You're doing a little more work. <laughs> All right, while we're on our back here, let's come to our breath. Notice how your breath feels this morning. If it feels smooth or maybe a little sticky or shaky, how deep can you breathe? Can you soften the belly like babies naturally do? They don't hold tension here. As adults, we start to hold tension and thus we take shallower breaths. If you allow your belly to soften and relax, you can deepen the breath providing more oxygen to the blood, to the body, to the mind, to the heart. 
and being content with your breath, whatever it is, and how the breath will change over the next hour. And then taking a moment to bring awareness to your back body. The space behind the heart. Noticing how that feels on your inhale. And on the exhale. Which part of your breath allows you to feel more grounded? More connected to the earth beneath you? And if you like, allow that awareness to go a little lower to the low back. So if you're unable to feel the low back push down to the ground, just shimmy your body around. And see if you can get it there. Even if you have to draw the belly button down slightly and do a little core engagement, just for a few breaths. Softening wherever you can soften. How does the inhale feel on the low back, on the kidney area? How about the exhale? And staying with our breath and asking yourself, how's contentment going for you? Is there perhaps something in your life you can let go of to feel content. Letting go of your attachment to how much work you need to do, how much schoolwork your children need to do, your expectations. If you let that go, can you become a little more content? Let's do a few audible exhales in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Two more times. Let me hear you. Ah, feel the vibration within your chest cavity. Ah, beautiful. Now we're going to take our feet down to the mat, mat distance apart, so they're a little wider than usual. Bringing your arms up overhead into goalpost arms and allow your knees to fall over to the right. And no worries if they can't touch the ground. My thighs and hamstrings, well, my whole body is sore. If you're watching Sammy, I blame you. <laughs> we did a hard workout yesterday. <clears throat> knees to the right, maybe you gaze to the left. If you'd like, your arms can join you. And the arms sweep up over to the left, keeping the back body down on the ground. So a little shimmy movement. And then maybe you'll notice that the legs can drop down a little lower. Yeah, one more deep inhale here. And then exhale as you come back up. Taking a full breath here to reconnect the back body with the mat. And now switching sides, if that felt too deep, you're in control of your body. Don't go as deep. Every pose you choose. If you wanna go at 50%, 30%, 100%. And just because you choose 100% at the beginning doesn't mean you can't change to 50. Maybe sliding your arms over to the right gazing the temple of the head maybe down to the ground or the back of the skull. Let's take one more deep inhale here. And then inhale, knees come back up, reaching your arms up to the sky and your feet up to the sky. And we're just gonna do a little bit of movement here, whether it be bending the knees and elbows, making circles with your wrists, 
ankles, just any fluid like movement in your body. Feel free to close your eyes. How would you be if you were a jellyfish upside down in the ocean? Yeah, feel that. Just starting to move your body. We'll take five more breaths. Happy baby pose. Hands come to the outsides of the outer feet. And then start to sway left to right. And you can do little sways or really big sways where your whole side body comes down to the ground. Mm-hmm. Some of us feel contentment here. <laughs> Some of us do not. I'm in the middle, middle contentment in this pose. Okay, knees come into chest, give yourself a hug, squeeze super tight, and then roll yourself up and down, massaging the back channel. Let's do one more until coming to a seat. Palms together, eyes closed. So this is my five-year-old's favorite pose. She calls it the own, the own pose. One day she'll join us. Right now they're in their room being quiet, hopefully the whole time. <laughs> Exhale everything out. Take a deep inhale. Come into tabletop position in the top of our mat. Moving through a few cat cows. Inhale as you drop the belly, gazing forward. Exhale, segmenting as you round the spine from the low back, mid back, upper back, and then finally looking in between the thighs. Inhale, opening up the front channel. Exhale. We'll do three more with your own breath. Maybe you start to go a little bit deeper, or maybe you bring your hips back and forward while moving in the cat-cow position. Actually, let's do a couple more of those if you decided to move like a kind of locomotive train. Yeah, if you're still doing regular cat-cow, join us while you shift your hips back and forth, and then reverse direction. Kind of like patting your head, rubbing your belly. Might be awkward at first, but eventually you'll get used to it. Child's pose. Bringing your palms up to face the sky. And then taking a moment and imagining that whatever you need to provide contentment in your life is pulsing straight into the palms of your hands. It's flowing straight down into your palms, moving up your arms into your body cavity and filling your heart center. Whatever you need right now, Allow the universe to support it. Bringing your hands back down to the ground, tabletop position. Hands move out about one print, handprint in front of you to tuck the toes, lift the hips for your downward facing dog. And since this is my first down dog and it's really cold, my body is feeling it, maybe bend your knees extra this morning. Walking your dog if you'd like. As you bend one knee, opposite heel draws down. Uh-huh. 
Maybe a little snap, crackle, and popping. Keeping your hips pulling up, up, up. And then coming to stillness, maybe you have a bend in the knees still to allow the spine to straighten. So notice right here, if you straighten the legs and you have to hunch the spine, if you're compensating in your body, bend the knees and then push the hips up to find a straight spine from the cervical through the tailbone, okay? Eventually your hamstrings will warm up and lengthen. One more inhale. Exhale as you tiptoe yourself to the front of the mat. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. I'm doing that two more times. Inhale, halfway. Exhale. One more. Inhale, find a little more length between your tailbone and the crown of your head. Exhale, soften the knees, belly and thighs touch as you grab elbows and allow your head to hang heavy here. Maybe shaking your head, yes, I'm perfectly content. <laughs> My world is not flipped upside down right now. Or maybe a little no. I'm still working through this day by day. And we're all doing this together. Isn't that the beauty? Our community is more connected, even though we're apart, because we're all globally going through this. Inhale as you slowly roll up, one vertebrae at a time. Sweeping your arms up, palms touch at the top. Exhale, release, arms down to your sides. Samastitihi, equal standing pose. Root your feet here. Spread your collarbone slightly. Tuck the tailbone. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands come down as you walk your right foot back and then your left for high plank. So we're gonna do a little Kabali body breath work here for about 30 seconds or so. So if you're feeling it's a little too intense, at any time, bring your knees down. Otherwise, breathe with me. It's a forceful exhale very quickly and your inhale will be natural, okay? You don't have to worry about the inhale. You worry about exhaling through the belly if you can, okay? Through the nose, ready? chest down, chin down, everything down, arms down to your sides as you rest the cheek. Close your eyes here, pause and feel. If you're on my Facebook, head over to my YouTube to continue this video. The link is in the above. Okay, if you're laying on your belly, now noticing how the belly feels on the inhale and on the exhale. Softening your jaw. Relaxing the glutes. Bringing your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers into a fist. And then inhale as you lift lifting the chest, gazing down slightly. Notice if you're creaking your neck and you feel that fold, have it be more natural, a natural curve in the spine. Draw your hands up a little more. Push the hip bones down, spreading the pelvis area. Lift, one more breath. Exhale, release your hands, rest your other cheek. Feel your breath. If your low back is a little tender, feel free to windshield wiper the legs side to side. And 
Okay, we're gonna do that one more time, adding on a little bit more. Interlacing your hands the other way, so the other pinky's on top. It'll feel awkward if you never practice that way. Inhale, lift the chest. Push the hips down, spread the sacrum, and then inhale, lift the legs. Where can you lift a little bit more? Can you lift the lower rib cage off the ground? Can you lift your hands a little higher or maybe your knees? The answer might be A, B, C or none of the above. One more breath. Exhale, release. Pause and notice. Hands back under the shoulders. Tucking the toes, drawing your seat back to your heels, and lifting the hips for downward facing dog. We'll take five breaths here. If you wanna walk your dog again, or even rotate to the outer edges of your feet, one side at a time. Keep your hips lifted if you're doing that. It's more of a side stretch. One more inhale and you're down dog. Exhale, bend the knees, step, jump or float to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale as you root your feet, sweep your arms up. Exhale, samasthiti. Inhale, utkatasana, chair pose. Speaking of contentment, I'm not sure I'll ever find that in this pose. This is not one of my favorites. Rather do bird of paradise any day. Okay, sit a little lower. Yep, I'm looking at you, right there. A little lower, just a little lower. Two more breaths. Exhale, forward fold, good job. Inhale, halfway lift. I don't know that one. I wasn't talking to you, Alexa. Step back, high plank. Holding here, one inhale. So this is a, an option if you want to build a little shoulder strength here. Drop your right forearm down to the ground and then your left forearm down to the ground. Right hand comes back up, left hand comes back up, I'm back in plank. And then switch, left forearm, right forearm, left hand, right hand. Okay, we're going to do that two more rounds, that was round one. Going from forearm plank to regular plank. Whew. You can always bring your knees down if you need to. My question to you is, are you content? <laughs> no, no, for real. Are you breathing? <laughs> breathing. One more. No, it's not, that was it. Inhale, exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down, everything down. <clears throat> Woo! Let's take a breath. <sighs> Feel your heartbeat. Notice what's going on in there. Is it feeling closed off, protecting itself? Or is it open, ready to share, to love? Bending your knees, reaching back for whatever you can grab. Maybe it's your ankles, maybe it's nothing. If you can't grab anything, just reach your fingertips and lift the chest. And maybe if you have your feet and your hands, kick your feet into your hands while your knees begin to lift. Mm -hmm. We'll be here for three more breaths. The more you kick your feet into the hands, the more you can feel a stretch in the shoulder rotator cuff area, front of the chest. Exhale, release, let go, maybe windshield wiper the legs if you'd like. Okay. This is another one of my favorite poses to teach recently. It's the same as bow pose, except instead of grabbing the outer edges of your feet, you're gonna rotate the thumbs up so you can find the inside, big toe side of your feet. Now, if you haven't done this before, it's gonna feel very different, okay? So be soft at first, don't go to 100%. When you're ready, start kicking your feet into your hands to lift your body off the ground as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Notice where you feel this. It's a different part of the rotator cuff. One more breath. 
Exhale, release, arms down to your sides, windshield wiper, side to side. Okay, so you can choose how you want to find your way into downward facing dog, whether you tuck the toes and go back seat to heels into that child's pose, or if you want to play with pushing yourself up through plank, what you want to do is bring your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes, and then walk your toes in closer to your hips. So your booty begins to lift a little bit, okay? Keeping your shoulder blades lifted, notice if your shoulder blades are hunching down, lift them up, and now engage the core and start pushing your hands into the ground. Keep the shoulder blades lifted until you straighten the arms all the way. Look at you! Downward facing dog. You're like, Leslie, you didn't see me. That was stupid. I didn't like it. <laughs> Try it a thousand more times. It only took me a million, I think. Inhale, sending your right leg up high. Keep your hips square. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, back out. Exhale to your right elbow. Inhale, back out. Exhale, left elbow. A little twist. Yes. Inhale, back out. Exhale, bring that right foot through. Let it land. Inhale, high lunge. Whoa. So if your shoulders are a little tight, you can always bring your hands down to your hips. Bring them to heart center. Or the most challenging version, reaching up to the sky. Inhale as you straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend in both knees. Inhale, slowly straightening. Let's not rush through it. Pay attention to those knees. Try to have them go forward. Less wiggle as much as you can. One more. Maybe that back knee touches down. If it doesn't, try to get the knee down to the ground. Bring your hands down for a low lunge. Left hand comes down to the ground. Right arm comes up for a twist. Mm -hmm. So you can stay here with that left leg down on the ground, or if you want to intensify the pose, tuck the toes, lift the knee. Mm -hmm. Keep spiraling the rib cage up. One more breath. Exhale. Right hand comes down to the ground. Step that right foot back. High plank. Inhale here. Exhale. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, over your toes, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Inhale, sending your left leg up high. Keep your hips square. So if you're new to yoga, this is open hips, where I keep my hip open, left over right. My pelvis isn't square. If I square it, it's going to be searching down, down, down. Yeah, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Compress it close. Use your core. Inhale. Exhale, left elbow. Can it touch? Inhale. Exhale to your right. Inhale. Exhale, bring that foot through. Let it land. Strong legs. Once you're feeling stable here, inhale, coming up into your crescent lunge. Notice if you're dipping into your low back here, allow those lower ribs to have a little less space between the hip bones and the ribs. So we sink, cinch in, a little boop. Okay, inhale, straighten both legs, especially that back kneecap. Exhale, lower. Two more. Coming all the way down with that back leg. Low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Right hand stays where it is as your left arm comes up for a twist. Keeping the back leg on the ground or tucking and lifting for three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my glutes are feeling this too. Exhale, left hand comes back down to the ground as you step the right foot forward to meet the left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, taking peace fingers. Think the 1969 Woodstock, wrapping around your big toe, bringing your feet hip distance apart if they're not already. And then exhale, forward fold. 
softening the knees so the belly and thighs are touching. Drawing the shoulder blades away from the ears. So notice if you're hunching them down, draw them up the back again. And we'll be here for five more breaths. Okay, releasing your feet, coming up halfway. This is gonna be a little bit of core work if you haven't done it before. Bending the knees, and this time, you're gonna reach your hands behind you. If you have a friend there, or a husband, or a child, reach, reach, reach for them. So we want our belly and thighs to touch. And we're doing a lot of core engagement. These muscles right here, the obliques, the transverse abdominis, you're reaching, so it's almost like there's a balloon being blown up in between your thighs and your belly, and you're trying to hold on to it. Maybe you're trying to pop it. So keep reaching those fingertips. Whew. Yeah. Maybe you're feeling a banda engage. Arms are parallel with the ground. Notice if they're down or up high, try to have them parallel. One more breath. Whew. And then inhale, sweeping your arms up. Exhale, release to Dasana, mountain pose. Pause and feel. Notice the quality of your breath here. Is it smoother than it was earlier? Can the exhale be a little longer than the inhale? Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands come back down, left foot back, right foot back, high plank. Inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, sending your right leg up high. This time, stacking the hips, bending the knee, and drawing the heel of that foot towards the sit bones. Mm -hmm. Inhale, lengthening that top leg. Exhale, right foot goes as close as it can in between your hands, pivoting the back heel down. Inhale as you rise, warrior one. So your first pose was crescent lunge with the back heel lifted over the toe. Warrior one, the heel is down. And we're pushing out through the pinky edge side of our foot. Bending in the front knee. Notice how much you can square the hips here. It's natural that you're gonna have a little bit of an angle, but we're still working on right hip back, the left hip forward. As you inhale, arms rise. Exhale, pushing your hands down as though there's heavy air beneath you. A little energy movement, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bring your arms down halfway to your heart center and then push out, exhale. Mm -hmm. Maybe you add a little back bend here. Inhale to the back bend. Exhale, push the air away from you. Maybe you arch or dome the back, okay? Let's try that two more times. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale, opening your arms out wide. Maybe widening the legs for warrior two. Gazing over the right fingertips, sinking a little deeper into your front knee. Front palm flips up as you exhale, reverse the warrior. One full breath here, find length along the side channel. Exhale, elbow to knee, top arm reaching up overhead for three, two, one. Exhale, bring your hand down to the ground, toward the ground, and then back up into your warrior two. Inhale, warrior one, bringing that front foot just another foot closer maybe. Okay, we're gonna make this a flow. Exhale, push the air away from you. Inhale, open, warrior two. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, extended side angle. Exhale. Make a windmill with the arm as you come back up, warrior two. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, warrior one. 
Exhale, push the air. Inhale, widening the arms, warrior two. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, extended side angle. Exhale, make the circle. Warrior two, beautiful. Hands come to hips, squaring the hips so your toes are pointing towards the center of your room. I don't know where you guys are at. Hi, Nara. Inhale here. Exhale, reach your arms out wide. Noticing if your wrists are over the ankles or not. If not, don't worry about it, but try to get there if you can. Exhale as you interlace your hands behind your back. Hi, sweetie. You better go back to your room, okay? Taking an inhale, send your heart up. Exhale, forward fold. Prasarita Padottanasana C. Maybe shake your head yes or no here. Yeah, feel free to bend the knees as much as you need to. If you want to come into like a half hybrid squat and straight legs, you can. I like to usually do a little pulses here just to feel it out. How do my hips feel? How do my hamstrings feel? Listening to the inner wisdom and guidance of my body. Not forcing it into a shape, but letting it happen organically over time. One more breath. You know when we were in that forward fold and reaching our hands behind us like the balloon was in our belly? Feel that same core engagement here and notice if you can go a little deeper. So your head will tuck a little bit. Mm -hmm. Exhale, releasing your hands down to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk your hands back to the front of your mat. Sweep the right leg back up to the sky, stacking the hips, bending the knee. And then exhale, drop the right leg down to the ground. Restabilizing that low back. Noticing how one side of your body feels compared to the other. We'll be here for three breaths. Inhale, sending your left leg up high, stacking the hips, bending the knee. If you see me disappearing, it's because my kids keep opening up their door and I can hear them. And I'm trying to keep it quiet for you. Working from home has its pluses and challenges. <laughs> Inhale, straightening that top leg. Exhale, bring the left leg through. Pivot the back heel down. Inhale, rise. Warrior one. Mm -hmm. Settling in here first, rooting our feet. Maybe doing a little micro bend of the front knee, just noticing what feels good. Where do we want to settle? And then exhale, push the hands down first. Inhale. Exhale, hands come towards heart. Push. If there's any energy in you that you don't like right now, just push it out on your inhale. And then exhale. Moving your energy through your body. One more breath. Yeah, inhale, warrior two. Maybe a longer stance, gazing over the left fingertips. Belly button moves into spine. Exhale, reverse warrior. Take a full breath here. Exhale, elbow to knee. Top arm reaches up overhead, palm facing down, extended side angle. Finding more length through the back heel and your fingertips. One more breath. Inhale, coming up, warrior two. All right, we're going to link all that movement together. Back foot draws in about a foot or so as you inhale, pivot the hips forward, warrior one. Exhale. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Inhale, extended side angle. Exhale, half rainbow, warrior two. Inhale, warrior one, moving with your breath. Exhale, push the air. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Inhale, elbow to knee, top arm overhead. Exhale, 
Bring your hand down, come back into your warrior two. One more, your breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, open. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, extended angle. Exhale. Beautiful. Inhale as you straighten both legs. Bringing your heels out in, slightly toes out. Mm -hmm. Goddess pose. Good old goddess. <laughs> and so you can choose what to do with your arms if you're feeling a little sluggish. Once again, hands can come to hips or heart center at any time. Okay? Lift the right heel off the ground if you'd like a little more challenge, keeping the hips low. How are you feeling? <laughs> Exhale, right heel lowers. Inhale, left heel lifts. Okay. <laughs> Exhale, left heel lowers. Maybe both heels lift. Why not? What's going to happen? We might fall back down. Let's be here for three. Where can you soften? For two. Can you sit a little bit lower? For one. Yes. Exhale, straightening your legs. Tap, tap, tap. Woo. Okay. Coming back to the front of your mat, Tadasana pose. Inhale, sweeping your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or jump back. High plank. You're rolling onto the outer edge of the right side as your left arm comes up into your side plank. So there are options here. You can take that right knee down to the ground if you'd like. We're about to come into wilding though. So if you know we're going there, you take that left foot reach it behind you about a foot diagonal and then start to push the front body up to the sky, pushing the sole of the foot down and softening along the front line, contracting and strengthening the back spine. One more breath. Exhale, coming into your high plank, switching sides, left leg um, goes down, right arm comes up. Mm -hmm. You can stay here if you'd like. You can drop the left knee if you want to stay in Vashisthasana or take that right foot about a foot behind you and then inhale open. Find your wildness, your inner child. Feel it, breathe it. Exhale, right hand comes down to the ground, downward facing dog. Inhale, sending the right leg up high, stacking the hips. Keep that leg straight and just stack the hips as much as you can. And then exhale, we're gonna lower that right leg down. Just re-stabilizing the body a little bit. Inhale, send that left leg up high. Doing the same thing we just did on the other side. Notice if your torso is trying to twist open, try to keep the rib cage square with the ground in this situation, but the hips open. Yeah, exhale, lower. Walking your hands toward your feet and then coming down into a low squat. You can keep your knees down on the ground, untuck your feet if you'd like. We're going to play with a little bit of crow pose before coming back down to the ground. But before we go into crow, we're going to do a little thing called crow crunches. So um, crow crunches are really nice because they teach you the parts of your body that might not be awake in crow. So we're going to do one crow first, then we're going to come down to the back, our backs and do a few crow crunches. And then we're going to come back up into crow just to see if the muscles that might not have been awoke in the first one have now turned on. Okay. So let's do a few wrist circles here. <sighs> Reverse direction. If you've never been in crow before, feel free to watch the first time and then try the second round. Hands come down to the ground, tuck the toes and then lift the hips up high. So notice if my hips are low, I can't really go anywhere. If my hips are high, I begin to lean my chest forward, so chest shifts forward. Eventually my knees will come in contact with my triceps. I keep leaning my chest forward, not down, forward. So my chest is going towards the front of the room. I keep leaning, 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 and then maybe one of my feet lifts towards my sit bones, a little hamstring curl. And then that foot drops, maybe the other foot lifts. Maybe both feet lift. And breathe here for three. Keep lifting the hips up, sending the chest through, two, and one, exhale, okay. Wrist circles all the way down to your backs. <laughs> How'd that go? Yeah, 
the next one will probably be a little better. We'll see. So we're going to come back into that happy baby pose. <sighs> Notice how it feels now that you've done a little bit of hip movement. Maybe you have a more mobility in the backs of your legs. The inner and outer hips. Okay, so for this crow pose, we're on our backs, but we're trying to be in crow. So we have a little bit more balance here because now our back body is holding up our weight instead of our tiny little wrists. They're so tiny, but we ask them to do so much. Okay, so step one, act as though you're doing crow. It's like there's a plank right above you and you're holding it. Okay, so your hands are now holding on to the invisible ground above you. Lift the head and the shoulders up towards where your fingers, where your palms are reaching. They're both going the same direction, up, up, up. Okay, that might already be enough for you. If you want to go a little deeper, take the knees that are wide, bring them to your upper arms, wherever they can go. You'll notice when you move into that action, your hips lift. Lift the hips up a little higher. Keep finding that contraction, that little ball. Hips lift, shoulders lift, hips lift, shoulders lift. You're trying to lift everything off the ground except that one point of contact on your back body. Keep squeezing everything together. Push your arms into your legs, your legs into your arms. One more breath. Exhale, release everything down. <sighs> Windshield wiper, side to side. So we're gonna do one more of those. <laughs> Maybe you go at 30%. Maybe you go at 100%. If you go at 30%, don't lift your head and shoulders and hips. Just do the arms and squeeze your knees into, into your arms. Okay, let's do one more. Upside down crow. And we'll be here for five. Soften the neck, soften the jaw. Three, can the hips lift a little higher? Two, can you push your knees into your arms? One, exhale, release, Whew, okay. So we're gonna come into our last crow. You can either rock and roll yourself up into that position, or if you wanna do like me, roll to your side and then slowly push yourself up, okay? Wrist circles before you begin. Hands come down to the ground. So for most of us, we were taught to have our fingertips pointing forward, like our wrist creases pointing forward. I like to angle out slightly. It feels a little bit better. I even do that in almost all my arm balances. My, my hands are externally opening, like I'm opening up a jar in a way, at least with my right hand, closing with my left. Is that right? Who knows? <laughs> all right, let's come into crow. Remembering lifting the hips, coming up, heels lift, hips lift. Lean your chest forward, chest forward, chest forward, chest forward, chest forward. Do that engagement that you did in your core work, right? Low belly draws up and in. And then maybe both feet lift, maybe one foot lift, maybe you fall on your face. If you're in crow and this is really easy for you, straighten your arms a little bit more. Sending the chest forward. Hi, family. Hi, Ernie. Thank you. Exhale, all the way down. Boat pose. Let's do a supported boat, especially if you have a dog underneath your mat. Mm. Reach your arms towards the front of the room. Maybe straighten the legs slightly here. And then come down halfway, hollow boat. For five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release. Ah, a mini Shavasana. Coming back to your breath. Okay, we're gonna come into camel pose for our back bends today. So rocking and rolling yourself forward. Come onto your knees. Hi baby, come here. So it's nice if you like if that blanket is still nearby or that sweater that you might have taken off because you build up some heat. My dog just threw up on the ground. <laughs> All right, place a blanket on your knees while I go get a towel for this. Okay. Yoga life at home. Live and real. Real as we're gonna get. 
That is my dog, Gimli. He is 11, almost 11 years old, so, you know, he is what he is. He's content. He is content. So for camel pose, inhale, sweep your arms up high. Find length along the front body. From the hip bones up through the sternum, find a little more length, and then start to push the hips forward. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, bring your hands down on your low back. Inhale, lengthen the front body. Exhale, maybe the hips naturally go forward a bit. If it feels okay in the neck, look up. We'll be here for three more breaths. Exhale, sitting back up tall as you come down to a seat, seat to heels. Now, if you're one of those people that loves to go into child's pose after this, if that's your pattern, maybe try not doing it this time. Let's work on our back bends and then we'll go into our forward fold. That way we're not moving our spine in opposite directions right after each other over and over. Okay, two more camels. Maybe this time if it felt okay in your back, you tuck your toes and reach back for those ankles. Maybe that seems like an impossible idea. Inhale, arms rise. Front and lengthen the front body as you exhale, find your way into your camel pose. Bring your awareness to your heart center. Soften the breath. Create a little more space for stillness and contentment. Santosha. Exhale. Lifting and seating, closing your eyes, going inside. Always checking in, so important to check in. The beauty of yoga is we allow the checking in. We invite it, in fact. It's more important than the pose, it's the feeling. How is it creating or moving the energy around our body? All right, last camel. If you wanna go into a deep camel, feel free to untuck the feet. It's your last one, so you choose on your inhale. Lengthen, always lengthening on the inhale. Exhale, find your way back. And if you remember earlier when we did that bow pose, one time we had our hands on the outer edges, the other on the inner edges, so if you'd like to play a little bit with that here, then do a little in external rotation of the arm while pushing the heart up. It's gonna feel very different. You might not like it. I usually don't like things when they're new either. And then exhale, strong legs, root the legs, knees come down as you lift. All right, now we can come into our forward fold, moving our feet to the side so we can bring our legs forward. Okay, coming into Janu Shirshasana. We're gonna do a side one though. So left leg reaches out long, Right knee is bent. Inhale, sending your arms up. Exhale, before doing a forward fold, doing more of a twist. So the rib cage is twisting up to the sky. Left arm anywhere along the length of that left leg. Notice if you can root that right sit bone and lift out, up, up, up through the rib cage and through that right outer armpit creating more length here, a longer line. Mm -hmm. Keep spiraling the ribcage up. And then exhale, coming down. Hands move to ribcage as you now spiral the ribs as much as you can over that front leg. If it feels too extreme, bring the left leg in a little bit. It doesn't have to be so angled out. Bring it more like a 30 degree angle or so. And then walk yourself down into your forward fold. Feel free to bend a knee place a blanket if you have one or a pillow underneath so you can let your belly and thigh touch and soften your head and neck here. Soften everything. Switching sides. Inhale. Exhale. Over 
to the right. Rooting the left side body, lengthening through the left upper body. A little gentle twist with the breath, not forcing it, allowing the breath to move you. Inhale, coming up, walking the foot in and leg in if you need to as you twist the rib cage, come down into your forward fold on the other side. Slowing down your breath. Inhale, coming back up, sitting in a comfortable seat. So we're gonna do a very gentle twist here. Taking the left hand over to the right knee. Right hand comes down to the ground. So instead of, you know, janking yourself with your body and pulling, pulling your arms into your leg, allow the breath to guide you here. So close your eyes and feel the breath as it moves down and up the spine, okay? So try to keep it focused there. On your inhale, feel the energy and breath travel from the low spine through the upper spine. And then on the exhale, maybe that softening allows a deeper of a twist. You're not using your muscles, you're using the breath of prana. Inhale, filling your heart and your body. Exhale. Not going any deeper than the breath naturally flows with ease and fluidity. One more time. Beautiful. Coming back through center. Take a moment to notice the right side versus the left side of the, uh, the vertebrae right now. This one feels a little clearer, spacious. And then switching sides, starting gentle. Seriously, 10% if you're one of those like, ooh, I can do this. <sighs> Moving with the breath. The more you can soften the belly, the more you can feel this go deeper in the spine. So with my inhale, I'm finding more space. I'm not even moving the spine at all. And with the exhale, my spine slowly shifts just depending on that space that was created. My shoulders aren't involved, my neck's not involved. Last breath. Lovely. Okay, we're gonna find our way down to our backs. Preparing ourselves for Shavasana. We'll do one more little uh, supine twist, gentle movement, arms reach out long, and allow your knees to fall over to the left as you gaze to the right. If you'd like to stack the knees right on top of each other, go ahead. If you wanna feel this a little bit more, Maybe you bring the knees a little bit closer to that left arm. Reconnecting your body and your breath. Inhale, knees come back up. Switching sides. Maybe the hips move slightly to the left as your gaze also follows. Left side, knees to the right. Inhale, knees come up. Shavasana. Legs and arms go out long. Your toes can fall away. 
towards the outer edge corners of the room. Palms face up. If you'd like, puff the chest up, shimmy the shoulders a little closer together, and then melt yourself back down into the ground. Maybe a few cleansing breaths in through the nose. Out through the mouth. And then going inside. Bringing awareness to the space around your heart. And then breathing in the word contentment. And with your exhale, letting go of anything that keeps you away from that, any worries or fears. Every inhale, breathe in the word contentment. And every exhale, you practice the art of letting go. And we'll be here about two minutes. And over the next few weeks, notice how your idea of contentment begins to change. How it might have been more concerned with where you travel, how high you move up at your job, the external, global feeling. And now your, your contentment will shift to the smaller things in life going out in the backyard and gardening with your family, feeling your hands in the soil, slowing down, reading a book. Contentment with actually spending time with each other in isolated areas. Board games, cooking dinners, watching a movie together. We have the gift to be with our families a little more right now to not worry about everything else going on outside. Rebuilding the microcosm within. Taking an inhale, reaching your arms up overhead, taking a deep stretch, and then rolling over to one side. Pushing yourself up to a comfortable seat bringing your hands together heart center <sighs> closing your eyes here santosha being okay with what is it's a big word right now if you like joining us all in one ohm Feeling it. Exhale. Inhale. Um. Hands to forehead. Be light. 
light and shine. Hands the heart. Be light and love. Namaste. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a lovely Friday and a beautiful weekend. Staying home and taking care of yourself. Be safe, be healthy, and find joy.